I'm sure you've seen the video of people dunking themselves into tanks with ice floating on top, and there are all types of cold submersion. Cold plunge is what we're calling it. Cold is really just the main important thing, and it doesn't have to be water. You basically have to be in cold, but for us, the way that most of us can get the cold exposure is water. If you do not have a plunge tank, you can do a cold shower. And here's how I would recommend starting. So at the end of your shower, if you are a newbie to cold, you can start with maybe one minute of cold. Turn the shower down to whatever you can tolerate. When you start to shiver is where it really makes a difference. And you want to catch your breath. You want to sing, you want to hum, you want to be calm. Can you move it up to two minutes? But the idea is if you can turn on that shivering, that shivering is what matters with your cold exposure. And what you then do when exposed to the cold is where the benefits lie. Catching your breath, breathing, humming, singing, and trying your best to compose yourself is where the cool stuff happens. Andrew Huberman talks about 11 minutes a week is where the sweet spot is for cold exposure. To turn on that reflex, you do have to make it cold enough to shiver. So if you can shiver in the shower in one minute, and say you shower every day, that would be seven minutes a week. You need to possibly work up to 11 minutes a week. Now listen, it, this is not for all people, I think. If you have Raynaud's, this may not be your jam, but you can learn and train your body to call, tolerate cold. You, you really, really can, especially in the shower. So that's where I would recommend starting. If you are wondering about this cold plunge, start with the cold shower. Hit the plus sign and follow for more women's health wellness tips. Bye.